seeing around corners with edge resolved transient imaging. In this work, we introduce a novel acquisition methodology as well as novel algorithms to enable the reconstruction of hidden rooms in 3D. We utilize vertical edge occluders, such as those found in doorways and at the end of corridors, to enable accurate imaging with excellent horizontal resolution. We are interested in scenarios in which we are faced with a vertical edge beyond which there is a hidden area we wish to reconstruct. We utilize a fast pulsed laser and single photon avalanche diode detector to probe the hidden space and take informative measurements. Given hidden areas beyond the vertical edge, such as these, we can form accurate reconstructions. Consider the case where we use a laser to illuminate sequential positions along an arc on the floor, which is centered on the vertical edge. At each illumination position, we take some measurement using our detector. On the right, we show a photograph of a real hidden scene, which is illuminated by laser light that is reflecting off of the Lambertian floor. We see that, due to the occluding edge, each subsequent laser illumination position will illuminate more and more of the hidden scene, and so each measurement will contain photons reflected from more and more of the hidden area. Each subsequent illumination position results in a measurement containing reflections from the same portion of the hidden area as the previous illumination plus an additional area. If we take differences between our measurements, we can assume that these difference measurements contain only photons reflected from a small wedge within the hidden scene. On the right, we show the differences between subsequent photos of the real hidden area. We see that the small wedges of the hidden scene are illuminated when we take these differences. The equipment used to perform this experiment is shown here. A 532 nanometer wavelength pulsed laser is directed by the Galvo mirrors to the correct position on the floor along the arc. Each laser pulse may result in some photons returning to the gated SPAD detector. These photon returns are collected to form a histogram of photon returns over time. We form this histogram using a single pixel single photon avalanche diode, or SPAD, and time correlated single photon counting. For each illumination position, we collect one histogram. These measurements contain photons returning from reflections from both the visible side of the scene and up to a certain angle within the hidden scene. A subsequent measurement will contain photons returning from the same area, plus photons returning from a greater angle into the hidden area. By taking the difference between these two histograms, we can therefore see photon returns that are coming from only a small angular wedge within the hidden scene, and any component from the visible side is cancelled out. In reality, our measurements are extremely noisy. The photon counting process results in Poisson shot noise in our measurements, and taking difference between these measurements results in skellum distributed noise. In addition to this, the laser light from the floor spreads out in all directions, and so typically most of the light within our measurements is actually returns from the visible side where the observer is. These contributions cancel out on average when we take differences, but still add variance to our measurements. Once we have collected these measurements, we use a computational algorithm to fit a model to the difference measurements to form a reconstruction of each wedge. Our model assumes that each wedge in the hidden scene will contain some number of planar facets which start at the floor. Each facet is at some distance rho, has a height eta, and an orientation angle phi. If there are multiple facets present in a wedge, we calculate also the effect of collusion neuro facets have on further ones. Finally, we consider the ceiling of the room as a separate component, where the height of the ceiling is the parameter that we wish to estimate. In this work, we derive an approximate closed form solution for the response curve from any facet, including mutual occlusions between multiple facets in the same wedge. This is key to efficiently solving the reconstruction problem. We estimate the model parameters given our measurement histograms using a reversible jump Markov chain Monte Carlo algorithm. The high angular resolution of our imaging system relative to the floor plane is achieved using the edge occlusion to direct light only in certain directions. However, the other parameters we estimate, distance, height, and orientation, are based on the shape and position of the response curve from the facets. It may be surprising that using an approximately confocal system with very little diversity in the illumination positions can still provide height and orientation information about surfaces within the scene. The distance parameter, orientation parameter, 
and height parameter all have different effects on the profile of the response. Increasing the distance from the facet to the corner shifts the starting point of the response to a later time, reduces the intensity due to fall off effects, and changes the shape of the curve. Changing the orientation from frontal parallel to a more oblique angle reduces the intensity and changes the shape of the profile. Reducing the height of a facet does not change the start position or shape, but cuts off the decay at earlier times. Given the very noisy difference histograms that we measure, these parameters can be difficult to estimate, especially the orientation, as it relies mostly on the shape of the response, which can be difficult to determine. Nevertheless, our algorithm can successfully fit all of these parameters in real conditions, as we'll now see in the upcoming experimental results. Here we demonstrate the reconstruction of an empty, five-sided room. We find all of the wall positions with good accuracy. Here we show a reconstruction of a room containing two mannequins. We find the positions of the mannequins with high accuracy, as well as their heights. Some of the back wall is difficult to estimate, as much of it is occluded from the point of view of the corner by the mannequins. Lastly, we show a reconstruction of a staircase shape inside the same room. We determine the height of each step in the stairs with great accuracy, as well as locate the object within the room.